we want to hear more now from Bill O'Reilly. Indeed. Uh, joining us with his take. Uh, uh, Bill, what, what's your take as you watch all of this unfold? Well, it's a pretty general question. You want to narrow down to politics or economics or social? What do you want me to address first? Well, I'm, I'm kind of interested in what's going on right now, which is the political battle in Washington. A lot of people saying, you know, there's pork going on in this kind of thing. Uh, obviously, you're going to get some of that. But are there winners and losers here we should be aware of? Um, the loser is the country because we're going to rack up another two trillion in debt, which brings the total yeah. up to twenty-five trillion. We're never going to be able to pay that back. Um, but I think the bill, as it stands, if the House doesn't mess around with it tomorrow, uh, does benefit the individual uh, worker, and that's who I'm interested in. So uh, you're going to get a check. Uh, every kid you have, you'll get five hundred bucks on that. And this is anybody making seventy five thousand for an individual, one hundred and fifty thousand for a couple on down. I think that is something that people need um, as far as the loans. And I hope most of the uh, grants to major corporations are loans that will be paid back like uh, in 2009. Um, as far as small business is concerned, it's a little dicier. Some of these businesses don't have a big margin, and to pay back a loan might be very difficult. But I think overall, the bill obviously is needed. And uh, I'm sorry it took so long because the Democratic Party loaded it up with all kinds of Green New Deal garbage, and the Republican Party didn't want accountability in the distribution of the funds. So both parties uh, did things they should not have done. Now let's talk about the coronavirus itself. Uh, you're saying this isn't the last uh, virus we're going to see, and, and there may be some evil people out there that might try to use it one day down the road. You were writing a column about this and uh, interested on your thoughts about how this is unfolding. All right, the column is called uh, The Contagion Chronicles, and it is on BillOReilly.com. This is where we do our news presentation every night, as uh, some Newsmax viewers know. And I file a column every week. So uh, the terrorists are watching this. They're watching uh, the worldwide pandemic and how it can destroy economies like that, you know, in a, in a space of two weeks. So biological wealth warfare has been with us since World War II. Even going back to World War I, they had the mustard gas and all that. Now, many nations have this biological stuff. They already have it. It's already weaponized. And if the terrorists get it, their hands on it, all hell could break loose. And that started the Iraq war because the UN weapons inspectors were expelled by some Saddam Hussein. Uh, President Bush the Younger thought that uh, they did have the bioweapons and went in and deposed Hussein. So that's what started that war. So now no. with this pandemic, very, very intense, you know the bad guys are watching it closely. And it's my understanding, too, that you have said that we were warned about this in 07, but uh, the governments are rarely proactive. Is that right, Bill? Yep. The BillOReilly.com investigative team unearthed a report out of the University of Hong Kong that warned the world in 2007 that Chinese people were eating horseshoe bats, infected horseshoe bats. And... That was a danger to the world. I saw that when I was in Taiwan, in the capital city of Taipei. I went to the midnight market. I saw these people eating snake blood and bats, and I was appalling. Yeah. And that's been going on. That's been going on a long time. And that's where the virus originated. Who do you think should do better planning as far as uh, this kind of threat is concerned? Do you think it should fall more in the states? For instance, you have the whole respirator question. Cuomo saying that the, the government should have done more. Um, how do you think this should be handled? Look, we owe $25 trillion. We're not going to be stockpiling a lot of stuff. That's number one. We've got to be realistic. Nobody thought this thing was going to come. Nobody in a million years thought it was going to devastate the world the way it had. We have enough equipment to handle 330 million people in their day-to-day -day medical situations. We have enough hospitals. If you look at the death rate in America compared to Italy and Spain, which have socialized medicine and all the government-run stuff, we have private. 
all right, it's eight, nine times higher, the death rate in Italy and Spain than it is here. So our medical system works okay, but we're never going to be able to anticipate disasters like this. That being said, now we need more respirators. Let's get them. I mean, we're a big country. Let's go down the list, work with the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, and figure out what we need to protect our population. Now, one of the reasons you say that we weren't ready for this uh, in another column you, you wrote the other day is the impeachment was a waste of time and it kind of took our focus off of other things. And uh, certainly the president, uh, um, it was his time taken up with this as well. There's no question about it. Uh, this popped out of China on New Year's Eve. Um, I warned on BillOReilly.com on January 22nd. The president stopped flights from China on January 29th, I think, or the 30th, all right, uh, a week after my warning. I think I was the first in the media. I could be wrong. I think I was first. Parallel to that was three weeks of impeachment mania. And I, I warned about it, but I wasn't paying attention to Wuhan. I was paying attention to impeachment, as was the president, his whole cabinet, the federal government, and all the press. So this bogus impeachment garbage distracted from the growing danger in China. And there's no question about it. It's a parallel run. You, you know, you see the, you see these pictures out of China and the response to the coronavirus and a lot of people in the medical community are outraged because they are in full protective gear. And yet here in America, we are struggling uh, to meet the needs of our medical professionals. A totalitarian system um, has an easier time of arming and protecting the bureaucracy that keeps them in power. That's the only thing I could tell you, that we live in a free society here. One of the reasons that Wuhan was contained in China, and I believe it is contained there, although you can't believe what the government says, is because the army surrounded the area and said, nobody out of your house. And in China, if you go out of your house and they don't want you to, you go to jail, not here. So it's a lot easier for totalitarian regimes to regulate that kind of stuff than free society. Um, you know, I, on the 22nd of January, we also tracked a flight uh, from China to, I think it was JFK. And we wondered why those people were being allowed off of that flight. So I, I was, we were right in there with you wondering Good. if we were going to allow this because we became aware of it. But just like you said, our attention had been distracted. So let's talk about the, the media and its attention, which it kind of goes from one thing to another. Uh, that You probably look at this and you have a lot of experience in the media. What are they doing wrong today that hurts the country itself? Um, excellent question. Excellent question. So the media and the Democratic Party know if Donald Trump gets a handle on the pandemic by summer, he's reelected. So right now, the latest Gallup poll says 60 percent of the American people feel the president's doing a good job vis-a-vis -vis the virus. He gets it under control. People go back to work, maybe a vaccine, medicine, whatever it may be, by summer. He's in. No way Biden wins. OK, what's the worst thing that can happen to The New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, NBC News? His reelection. So they're not going to report the things that are working well in fighting the pandemic because they don't want Trump to win. It's not that they want people to get sick. They, that's not what that wouldn't be fair. And I'm not saying that. But the collective psychology of the major media allied with the Democratic Party is, holy you know what, if this guy succeeds, we can't get him out. Therefore, they will downplay any kind of effective measures the federal government will take. Bill O'Reilly, thank you so much for your time today. Coming up, we will have continuing coverage of the coronavirus outbreak.